Today we're talking about an exciting technological revolution in the world of farming. Imagine this, robots with wings zooming around your local orchards, nimbly picking the best fruits off the trees. Sounds like science fiction, right? But it's happening right now. This is a reality with Tebel Aerobotics Technologies, an Israeli startup that is dramatically changing the fruit picking game. These flying robots aren't just your average drones. They are skilled pickers sizing up each fruit for ripeness and size before gently sucking them into their collection bins. It might sound like we're replacing our farm workers with robots, and to some extent that's true, but these drones do something humans cannot do. They work three shifts a day without breaking a sweat or complaining about the heat. This technological advancement signals a massive leap in the way we harvest fruit. These drones can work day and night, increasing productivity. What do these flying fruit pickers mean for us? Well, are we headed toward a world where robots do all the work, or will there always be a need for the human touch? It's hard to say, but one thing is for sure, the future of technology is up in the air, literally. Welcome back to Seed Time and Harvest. Today we're at Brother Jesus and Sister Kathleen's house helping them with their garden. They just got their country property. They're getting their garden started and they did a wonderful job putting these amazing beds in. They have four eight foot by four foot bed, about two feet deep. And then they have two four by four bed, also two feet deep. The bed is made, of course, with treated wood and they line the inside with like a uh, weed barrier to add some more support to the bed. Underneath, they added a wire fencing because Sister Kathleen did mention that they have borrowing critters just to protect whatever is inside the garden. They lined the bottom with the mesh wire. Then they also put in the cardboard, which is, which is a, like a, an additional barrier that's also going to break down kill the grass underneath and add nutrients to the soil. Because the beds are so deep, what we've gone ahead and done is we've just cut down some, they cut down some pine trees actually. We put the pine trees, the, the trunks in the bottom of the bed and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it about halfway with pine needles. You can use grass, you can use um, leaves, things that does not have any seeds in it to add volume to the bed. The pine needle and the wood is going to break down over time to add that volume and then we're just going to fill it up with some good compost that they already have also to prepare the beds for planting. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a close-up on how the bed is made. In the corners they have four four by four posts that acts as a foundation and the support for their bed and they have one by threes that they used for the outside and the weed barrier in the middle as a barrier also a good protection they also added the one by three on top which i like so if you're in your garden and you get tired instead of grabbing a chair you can just sit down and relax and rest a while and then get back to work so let's get back to work so sister kathleen you have a lot of stuff here tell me what is it that you you're planning on planting what do you have here so we've got a couple varieties of parsley so here. parsleys and then watermelon which is one of my favorite fruits so i've got watermelon four of those. okay <laughs> And then, then this is all herbs. We've got all herbs here, yep. I've got lemon balm, sage, oregano, oregano thyme, thyme, chamomile, dill. Yep. sweet mint. Now, the only thing I want to mention is when you think of herbs, there are certain herbs that I personally would not put in a raised bed. Okay. Why? Because they would, they're going to take over, especially the mint. The mint runs underground okay. and wherever the root goes, it it's pulled, puts up a plant. Now, because you have so many larger beds and you have two small ones, I would recommend dedicating like a small, one of the smaller beds, specifically for like the mint, the oregano and the thyme. Okay. You can put other things in there that are very compatible with those plants. 
but since they're not going to be moved again wherever you put them you're going to they're going to stay there then that would it would make more sense to put that in a smaller bed now okay. for your watermelon they will die down the parsley they're going to die down and you'll replace them okay but like for the mint it's just unless you pull it out it's going to stay where you put it and it's going to keep growing okay great because so, i love mint so that's yes great. <laughs> so i would de dedicate one of the smaller beds to things that are more permanent okay you know if you think about plants you have your annuals that grow for that year then they die then you replace them you have perennials will give you two years then the roots um, I'm sorry, they'll flower or seeds and then you replace them. And then you have the biennials, which will last a longer time. Okay, okay. and then you have your permanent, which are your fruit trees. Of course, you don't want to think about <laughs> putting those. fruit trees in the raised bed because that's just going to, that's not going to be good. That's going to take over. So that's just a good suggestion for the herbs. Okay. Wherever Great. you put them, that's where they're going to stay for another two to three years. So let me ask you too, did I... For that raised bed, I bought like, for example, two of the mint, um, and then two the thyme. of the thyme. Actually, I only have one at the time. Two. You have a lemon oh, yeah, thyme and a regular a right. German thyme. I do thyme. have two thyme. I think it's only one of the oregano. Okay. So would you put the oregano in there as well? I will put the oregano. Okay. You can put the oregano in one of the um, smaller beds on the side. It will okay. hang out. Okay. And then you can put the mint. The mint is the one that's most invasive. Okay. So that's going to spread more than the oregano will. Okay. And, and of course, if you have you have your herb in your garden so you'll just go from your kitchen to right. the garden harvest and then prepare but to contain it a little more you can harvest if you the more you harvest of course the more they'll grow but it will they won't, won't be as big okay so you can keep them in the smaller area excellent all right and then what else do we have so we have zucchini and we've got squash and cucumbers here all right um, now for the cucumbers well we because we don't have any additional fencing and all these are well the cucumber is a vine mm -hmm. what we're gonna need we to actually, do I do have a roll of this fencing you're gonna have a roll okay so what we can do is we can just select the bed mm -hmm. that we can attach fencing to the side of okay. so we can trellis the cucumbers on there okay otherwise they're just gonna either come over the bed or grow, or grow on in it. the bed. Is there a way to like arch it so they yes. grow around it? Um, I like the cattle panel. If you have tractor supplies, you sells do. cattle panel that you can attach to the bed, the base of the bed, and that would be good. Well, the watermelon may be too heavy. The watermelon, you may just want to lead outside. Okay. But for your cucumbers, if you have vine and beans, tomatoes that are um, indeterminate, then you can just put them along those cattle panel and that would be a nice home. It would look really nice too. Okay, excellent. Yeah, give a nice house for your vine if you don't want to just put up the regular fence. All right. Would you recommend putting all of those together as well since they grow late? Would you put the watermelon on the inside and let it grow, spread out, and then put the others to where they'll grow over top? Now, when you think of the watermelon, watermelon are long the right. vines of the watermelon will get longer than the cucumber i wouldn't put them in the same bed okay or even if you put them in the same bed i wouldn't put them on the same side okay. now of course they are the same species of the squash family they attract the same pest the same disease so if you think about it if your cucumber gets an infection then your watermelon, watermelon your squash milk. all of them will go okay. so i will separate them, them okay. spread them out yes okay. All right, and then you can also interplant some herbs. And of course, there are plenty of natural remedies or um, pesticides that you can use, fungicides that you can use that are natural to keep the pests at bay, okay. including this, this soap, which we've talked about. So just, we will put them separate okay. for now because of spacing and also because I don't know how soon you will get the kettle panel to find them because okay. of course, they're already starting to put out trellis. Okay. okay so you'd want to get those on a vine sooner or later soon. okay the squash they're good the squash they don't do you have butternut squash they didn't have butternut they had just oh uh, the zucchini, zucchini oh, and the crooked neck and the yeah the, okay the straight neck, neck. Mm -hmm. so those those won't need to be trellis if you have like a tomato cage you can put those in the tomato cage so that they can grow straight up in the one spot okay. if you don't have a cage they'll probably need about two feet could I use this to make a cage out of since I have extra of this and I also have the chicken wire too? 
if you think about using this type of fencing to make a cage, how are you going to harvest? Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> when the to, with the tomato cage, of course, it has, it has more, more space. space. Yep. So you can, yeah. get to, you can get to remove the leaves that are drying and mm -hmm. harvest you know, your produce. Unless you make it like a cone, so you can reach down into it, but the bed is already high. Yeah. So yeah. you don't have to get a ladder or something to be able to reach into it. Or maybe, if, well, no, because even if you remove it, then you run the risk of damaging the plants, taking it off to harvest, then enclosing it. So tomato cage would be a good. Okay. Or what you can do is, if you find any nice straight piece of wood on your property, mm -hmm. you can secure it in the soil. Okay and then um, you can Take use it. yes you can use whether it be yarn or some type of fabric to attach the squash when they start to get bigger to okay. it so that you can assist it to grow up excellent so that would be easier that way all right now you have a lavender okay rosemary. rosemary we may want to consider putting the rosemary in the ground okay not in the raised bed okay if you do put in a raised bed, put it at the corner, the very Cause corner, because <laughs> the rosemary do get big. Rosemary just do get big. So, well, and I have another one upstairs. It's a baby size like this too that my mother-in-law gave me from oh, okay. her garden. So. Okay, so there you go. Rosemary, yeah, they do need a lot of space. Okay. So, now, marigold. Have you ever had eaten these? No. No. Can you eat? I Marigold, can yes, they are edible. It does have a very um, spicy flavor. It's really good with salad. So really? that's something that's edible. And marigold are very, very good for pest control. Like if you have um, any form of caterpillars or things like that, the marigold will also repel some of your pests. Mm -hmm. And I did not know that and you the, could eat it. Yes, and they add color. They add color to your life. So the flower, yeah, you do actually, you can actually so this harvest them. as well. You Both of them. Mm -hmm. You just harvest the flower and you add them to your salad. Wow, that's yes. amazing. Yeah. Excellent. So it's always good to put things in your garden that's, you know, interplant them for pest control purposes and also edible flowers because there's, there are a lot of varieties of edible flowers, your pansies, marigold, nasturtiums, even the squash flower can be eaten. All right, and over here we have different varieties of tomatoes. Now, this is a beef steak. So I did, and you have a cherry. These are cherry. There's something no. that I hadn't heard of before. Bush Early Girl. Bush Early Girl. I'm not familiar with that one. But it looks like it's not really a big plant. It's not going to grow as... Like one tomato. Like oh, yeah, you already have fruit. The beefsteak do get big, okay? So that's a, it's an uncontrolled variety. So they have no control over how long it, it grows. Okay. So this one, you're definitely gonna need a trellis okay. for that, some form of support. Okay. And these, it looks like they only grow up to two feet. So you're not gonna need, you won't need much of a support. Maybe a tomato cage will work for these also. Okay. All right, so it looks like you have a good amount of things here. Now we're gonna get into our sister's garden and then later on we'll talk about the fruit tree. So our next step in the process, oh, and I forgot, she brought her seed box. So my sister has a lot of seeds. Lots of seeds that I've been buying. <laughs> okay, um, and storing up. more than will fit in the yard at this time, but we do wanna eventually like Starts. expand okay. and also start mm -hmm. harvesting seeds too. But these are all the different varieties just in that. Okay. And then if you think about the season that we're in, not everything you'll be able to plant. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So when you think about this seed packet, I see things that, are, that I would put in, in the garden and that can be planted right now. Your beets, you can put in some lima beans, you can put in some carrots, Swiss chards, you already have corn. I'm sorry, you already have cucumber. It's a little bit... I wouldn't put cor corn in, in raised bed, okay. but even if I did put corn, it's a little late. Late, okay. It's a little okay, late because corn year. needs about 120 days of good heat for you to be able to harvest. Um, you can start them and see how the Lord works. I mean, we don't know what the winter is going to look like. Every season, right, it seems like the true. weather is changing. So if you're going to plant corn, I would plant them now. Okay. 
the only thing with this packet that it doesn't show how long it takes from when you start your seeds to harvest let me see if you have any such like for this one let's Ooh, see that is maybe the flower variety. this is a flower and variety this is some um, heirloom seeds there okay and then i have different kinds of fruit like um Elderberry, raspberries, strawberries. But these, these don't show. That's the only thing. Usually, when you get when you get seed packet, they would tell you um, they have 90 days till harvest or 120 days till harvest. You just have to research what you're planting to see you anything less than 120 days will be good to plant we'll now. Good to plant. Cilantro, no, because it's too hot. Cilantro is a cool season plant. Your greens, unless it's like collards collard greens those you can plant now and spinach spinach does take a short time to grow okay um, radish about two three weeks you can start harvesting your radish uh, peas are also good green onions onions are good of course onions take a long time um, from when you start the seeds for uh, for the until they it's time for you to harvest them so could we put the seeds like just directly in the ground or do we need to start them then it's when you think about starting seeds it's all about the soil temperature okay if the soil temperature is higher than 55 then you start them directly in the ground in the garden okay now if you think about winter when the soil temperature is cold that's when that's you start your do. seeds inside get them on a warmer prepare them for transplanting so we're going to take a look we're going to go through these and see how much space we have left over we're going to have plenty of space okay. after we plant these plant and then we'll figure out figure which out one the of the seeds you want to get in perfect all right. 